guys, this is Juan KYM Solution. What's up everybody, this is Juan KYOM Solution and today I want to guide you through the 12 steps that you need to know before coming to Canada. Let's go! Step number one, you need to identify uh, how you're going to immigrate to Canada. There are essentially uh, four different ways to do that. First one is through a uh, study visa, second one is through a uh, job offer, Third one is through the Express Entry Program, and the fourth one is through a working holiday visa. So, depending on what you pick, uh, your step number two will be: if you're going for a college, you will end, you will have to find uh, what is uh, the province that you want to go, what city, what college or university, and which program you're gonna do. So all this will change, not all the colleges and universities offer the same program and the prices also vary from college to college. If you decide to uh, try to immigrate through a job offer, you want to go to a website called jobbank.ca and in there you're going to select the province that you want to immigrate and you will find um, basically all the employers that participate on this program and they will be able to offer you uh, a job and you will find like different positions that are offered and it's, it's gonna be like a great start point so if you are if the requirements uh, match with your skills with your resume with your curriculum then you can go ahead and send an application and see if uh, the employer in Canada is willing to offer you uh, a job offer. The third way is the Express Entry. This is uh, a program created by the government where you uh, register and you create a profile. In this profile, you're gonna have to answer a ton of questions. Uh, the most basic one are like your age, your sex, where you, sorry, where you're coming from, and. Uh, uh, what's your level of English, what's your uh, education level, and all those things, they're gonna add up and give you a final score. So what happens is that every couple of weeks or three weeks, the government, they do a draw and they select a certain number of candidates that, are, that they have one score or above that score. So let's say you have uh, 400 points and uh, on, the, on this week draw, the government call everybody that has 390 points and above, congratulations, you will receive an invitation to apply for permanent residency. Uh, there are like many different programs included in the Express Entry. If you want to know more about, more about this, you uh, want to go to the uh, government website. And the last options that, that I got for you guys is the working holiday visa. It's not available for every country. Uh, there are certain countries that have conventions with Canada and uh, people can come for one year and work six months and study English for six months. That's the working holiday visa. So you need to do both things. You cannot come on a working holiday visa and work for 12 months. That doesn't work. So let's say you picked what kind of uh, process you want to follow. So now we are at step number two, number three. Um, I will talk more specifically about uh, college and uh, study visa, because this is the, the most common one. Uh, Express entry and job offer are like very specific and it's not everybody that has access to, to those two. So let's talk about college. You, uh, you find, uh, you identify the province that you want to immigrate, you identify the college or university that you want to go to, and you know 
uh, which course you want to take. Congratulations. Now you need to go ahead and send an application to your college. Uh, they will later reply to you and accept it or refuse you, depending on your English level, depending on how many spots they have available in the program and depending like when you want to start your program. So, okay, congratulations. You, we are a step four and you received receive your LOA letter of acceptance, meaning that the college or the institution that you selected uh, wants to, uh, wants you as a student. So you can now start your visa process. So step number five, you gotta uh, start with your visa. This process can take from three, four weeks up to over one year, depending from the country you're applying from, from. And you can do it either by yourself or you can have an agency or a consultant helping you with that. The documents that you will have to provide are exactly the same. Okay, so using a consultant doesn't mean that you don't have to do the work because they don't know about your life, they don't know about you. So they're gonna be asking you a set of documents and to provide certain things and you will have to do all the work anyways. The advantage is that if you don't speak English or if your level of English is, is not so good and you, have, like, you are afraid of making mistakes, that could be a great option for you to use a consultant. They have experience, they know what they're doing, most of them, and uh, they can guide you throughout the process and submit the documents for you. But if, you're, if you have a good English and uh, if you have time, you can do everything by yourself and save yourself a lot of money. Uh, there are plenty of uh, blogs forums, uh, Facebook pages, and YouTube channels, they guide you every step of the way to get your study permit. L number six, if you um, decide uh, that you wanna come and you apply, you will have to prove to the government that you are able to sustain yourself uh, here in Canada even without working. Because if you come as a student, you can only work six months. So they wanna see that in your bank account, you have enough money to maintain yourself during your first period here in Canada. So if you come alone, you need to prove that you have $13,000 in your bank account. Couple, it will require 16,000. Family of three, 20K. Family of four, 24,000. This money needs to sit in your account for at least three months before you apply. Okay, so it cannot be uh, an overnight thing where you get like someone to borrow 20 Ks and you put it in your account and then you transfer back two minutes later. They will know. Okay. The other thing that you want to prove and that you will have to prove is your English level. You will need this for two things for apply to the college. Most of college require that you have a certain score uh, that goes like from four to seven, mostly. Every college is different, every program is different. The, uh, the, the English tests that you can take uh, to prove this are basically three. It's IELTS, TOEFL, or uh, Duolingo, uh, some, uh, some universities and colleges are accepting Duolingo now. And if you wanna study French, there is a specific test in French that you can, uh, that you can do. <coughs> uh, once you got that under control and you are still uh, providing the documentation for your visa, at some point, uh, you'll be required to write a letter of intent. In this letter of intent, you're gonna explain to the officer, to the officer that is uh, uh, evaluating your visa request, basically why you wanna go to Canada, 
and what you're gonna do there and uh, why and when you're gonna go back to your country. This is very important. So most of people are uh, the ones to come here. They come with the intention to stay here and that's fine. But you cannot tell that to the officer that first reads your, um, your application. What they wanna see is basically, okay, I'm gonna come for a couple of years. I'm gonna do this uh, course in engineering or IT or whatever it is. And this course that I'm gonna take in Canada is gonna be beneficial for my life in the Philippines, in India, in Brazil, in Italy, wherever I'm coming from. And this is why. Because once I get this degree from Canada, I'm gonna be able to secure a better job, I'm gonna get a promotion, or I'm gonna open my company, or whatever it is that you're gonna do. But it needs to make sense for the officer, okay? Point number seven, the, uh, the conversion of the, yeah, the conversion of your uh, school records. Basically what you wanna do uh, sooner than later is to look for a, a company or an organization called WES, W-E-S, that will uh, basically convalidate your diplomas and your certificates, your graduation or whatever you have from your country and they will translate it and uh, give you like an equivalence of what would that be if it was achieved in Canada, okay? So let's say I have a BA in, from a university in Italy. So what I wanna do is send my diploma, say all my scripts, or like the exams that I took to this WES organization. And I'm not sending that, that myself, so the actual organization, like your school, your university, needs to send that to this organization called WES, so they can make sure it's uh, not being, uh, it's not fake. Uh, all the information is in the is in WES website, and uh, what they're gonna do is look at over it, okay, and say this will be the equivalent to this in Canada. So whenever you apply for college or whenever you apply for your visa or for your permanent residency or whatever, you can use that and that will give you points. So you wanna do that, okay? And it's something that can take some time. So you wanna uh, take care of this when you still are in your country. Instead of like trying to do it over the phone, over email with the university, it's it's big headache, okay? Number 10, uh, you will need to translate a lot of documents. Unless they are already in English, everything that is in another language that is not English or French, you will have to, uh, to translate it using uh, an official translator. And this goes for your uh, birth certificate, birth certificates of your kids, marriage certificate, Everything that is official that you want to use as a document to come to Canada, it will have to be translated by an official translator, okay? Again, uh, you want to start doing this sooner than later. Uh, it's, it can be expensive, but uh, I started doing that when I still was in my country because I, I had all the documents with me instead of like doing it two or three years later when you're already in Canada and then you need to know that document and God knows where it is, right? So it's something that you wanna start looking into it. Uh, number 11, uh, now you finally uh, finish applying for your visa, you get your visa, you've been accepted, it's time to go to Canada. So you're gonna buy your air ticket, and then what? You're gonna ride to Canada, where are you going to stay? So we get contacted for a lot of families that are relocating, that are moving here, and the biggest fear is, okay, now I got everything, but where am I gonna sleep tonight? So you don't wanna leave that 
for last. You wanna try to be organized and uh, get in touch with uh, someone like us, KY Home Solution. And what we do is exactly this. We provide housing solution for people relocating to Canada, specifically in the province of uh, New Brunswick and Prince Edward Island. So either you are looking for a room, uh, for a double room, for an apartment, two bedrooms, three bedroom, a house, we can help you with that. All our solutions come fully furnished, full equipped, with all the utilities included. The only thing you need is basically your luggage and you're ready to go. We provide towels, linens, airport pickup. We try to make this transition as uh, seamless as possible for people relocating. And uh, point number 12, the last one, it's uh, one of the most important to me. It's uh, expectation versus reality. So when you think to immigrate to Canada, uh, you think that life's gonna be great, uh, everything is wonderful, what you see on social media and everything is easy and life is gonna be perfect. And guess what? It's not gonna be, especially not at the beginning, not the first couple of years. No, while you study, uh, you can work only 20 hours a month. So a lot of people, I feel that they get discouraged in the beginning because they came with very high expectations and thinking, okay, I'm a doctor in my country. I go to Canada and I'll be a doctor as well. Yeah, that's not how it works. When you come to Canada, you gotta start from the bottom and build your way up. And it's totally possible to do it. And you can totally be successful but it requires uh, resilience, patience, and uh, a lot, a lot of uh, ambition and, and strength and not giving up. So please be ready to all those things. And I, and I assure you that your life in Canada is gonna be great. You know, if you have kids, if you come with family, you're gonna love it. And, uh, it's gonna take you a little bit more time to get at the same level that you were at your country, like professionally, I mean, but it's totally worth it. So if you guys need more information, please get in touch with me and thanks so much for watching this video.